Yeah, okay. We are not talking about Zen or CSS debugging. Let go. Hello. Uh, hi. <laughs> my face, my face. I know it's real. Yeah, because there's nobody here. So Excuse me? There's no hu- human warm bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, my friend. <laughs> yeah, so no warm bodies here. A lot of cold bodies. So cold. <laughs> Okay. So to the, to the topic that I wanted to talk about today is uh, the Zen of CSS debugging. I wanted something more fun, but then turned out that CSS <coughs> is quite serious. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, okay, let's move in. Okay, so uh, first... She's talking to the mic. Really? Not this? Correct. You're using your laptop mic. Damn it. Someone so because connected to my laptop, so you're using your laptop mic. Good. Carry on. Yeah. Carry As on. your NS commander will say, carry on, recruit. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I am on Twitter and also on GitHub. Um, I'm quite sad that I couldn't get the same handler on Twitter, but it's okay. Okay, so... Um, be natural. <laughs> I'm trying Outside. to be subtle. What's this person doing? <laughs> okay, uh, so I think... The thing that um, has always been interesting about CSS is that concurrently, there, there is discussion on both why is CSS so hard and at the same time, why is CSS so easy? So um, just some examples, like for example, the family guy CSS GIF that usually people will talk, will, will talk about when you talk about, talking about CSS. And at the same time, we have people who say things like this, hmm? offensive. offensive, yeah, <laughs> jerks, okay, so um, I started to look into this and thinking like, actually, yeah, what is, what is the hard part about CSS, and it could be that actually writing CSS is easy, but then debugging is extremely hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I went to dig into like Stack Overflow to look at like the, the most asked questions in CSS. Um, so if we are looking at the first and the third questions, right, it's um, not much to talk about like, actually. They are like um, the things you want to know, but then it's quite straightforward. Um, the interesting one is the second most asked question in the history of CSS on Stack Overflow, <laughs> which is how to horizontally center a div. So I think that's a question that I think a lot of us has asked along the way when we are building sites, like be it vertically or centrally, diagonally, centering something. It's easy, very easy. <laughs> okay, so uh, on CSS Tricks, there's a centering CSS complete guide. <laughs> I use that in the huh? yeah, yeah, it's actually quite brave for them to say that it's actually complete. Like I also don't dare to say like <laughs> I know it completely. But then, um, so in this article, you'll see that it starts with this line, which is, um, um, I think the issue isn't that it's difficult to do, but that there are so many ways of doing it. And depending on the situation, it's hard to know what which to reach for. So I think the answer here is, a lot of times when we are debugging CSS, the answer is, it depends. So this is like the, the best answer from senior software engineer. Like, <laughs> What do you think is the best way to do this? It depends. And then CSS is full of, it depends. So um, so why do we end up in a situation where it's, it depends? One is that the HTML have styles even before you put in your styles.css. And that comes, uh, one of it, that comes from browser default styles. Um, so even if you don't write any style or inline style, style.css, or anyway, la, actually, you already have some styles that are inside already. So when you, when you look at Dev2, you will realize that, let's say, your HTML has a margin in your page already to begin with. And then, uh, like, paragraph have some padding on the top and the bottom. And, like, headings have padding. The weirdest is the least. Least has margin and padding in a very weird way. So... And then the second thing is that there is a certain natural flow of content in CSS. So uh, 
I realized that this is a super good <gasps> uh, site to look at it, where it talks about like what is the normal flow in inside a HTML page. Like, even if you don't, even if you don't talk about browser styles, um, when you lay out like your HTML elements, there is a certain way where they try to lay themselves out. Like if they don't actively try to lay themselves out, they will have stacked on top of each other. So your whole page will be like all the texts are like stuck on each other. But um, like how you structure your content, the content itself we know how to position themselves around each other so that things make sense. Okay, still here. So I guess in this sense, you are no longer dictating a certain style, but you're actually trying to tweak styles. So you have a certain, like your content is laying itself in a certain way already. And what you're trying to do is to actually push it towards the correct direction. And this so this is the part, is the part where, where like why it's, it's, it, depends. it depends because, because your size and position is impacted by its containing block. So a lot of time, like, let's say when you have something that you're stuck, you try to ask, let's say, or you try to ask someone on Stack Overflow, then they will say, eh, but then can you show me your DOM? Because I cannot solve your question without showing me the DOM. And then sometimes you show a bit of the DOM, then they're like, okay, but actually the problem is actually more outside of the part that you share. So actually, you, maybe you share one div, right? The problem is because of the wrapper div that's the problem. And then a lot of time, um, we believe that the containing block is its parent, but then this is not the case. So for example, let's say if you put like position absolute on uh, an element, and then you and then you don't put position relative on your like direct parent, right? That's not going to be your containing block. So your absolute will be relative to like the next, the first time it can see a position relative, and that is block actually. So, uh, first tip for the Zen of CSS debugging is that have Dev2 sanitation. So, what this is is that when you open Dev2, you realize that when you hover over your element, they have certain colors. They will change background color, and you realize that you're actually mm -hmm. talking about your element. Sometimes they don't highlight your element, and you know you're screwed. Okay, go and dig out why. Dig out why it's not highlighting. Because when it's not highlighting, something is happening. And although it's printing on the screen, right, the CSS does not know how to actually style properly your thing. And then sometimes it's not that it doesn't highlight. Sometimes it highlights more. Like, let's say if your square is 50 pixel, but then when you open your dev tool, it highlights a 60 pixel. Then you realize, ah, shit, man. Something's wrong. So, I guess it's something that uh, uh, I just like to strive for. Like, when I write something and then I check Dev2, it should match exactly like what I have in mind. So, and then um, I guess like the additional point is that less is more. So, extra rules are, to me, is not like a good way of doing things. Sometimes bugs that you run into is because you wrote like extra rule. Like if your text align is already left and then you still write text align left, sure it works, but then sometimes you run to a bug and you're like, oh shit, it's because I write this extra thing. So don't write extra thing and make sure your dev tool is highlighting the correct thing that you correct yeah, that you want. Okay, so go back to Stack Overflow to look at more questions that are being asked. So this is a question that are being viewed 1.9 million times, which is how to make a div 100% height of the browser window. So, um, if you are a modern CSS person, you realize that this is no longer a problem anymore because you will put height 100 bh. But then, uh, so this is uh, this used to be a problem, I guess. And I think the important thing that you we should look at is that um, uh, the person who asked this question said like I've tried height 100 percent, minimum height 100 percent. Um, it can be that this is how we approach CSS sometimes. Like we just throw things to the wall until something sticks, and then you're like, "Oh, actually, this is my one," without realizing what's happening. So, um, this is another question that is being asked a lot of time, which is, "How do I do transition on the CSS display property?" So over here, our friend here wants to transit from display none to display block. So 
as a normal human being, how do you understand it? Is that you got nothing and you got something. In between, eh, means it's like 50% got thing. Lah. So, nothing, 20%, 50%, 75% got thing. I mean, this is, uh, to us, is our human nature. We, we understand this way. But then, to CSS, it's like, what is nothing to something? Like, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Like, how can you change from nothing to something? Okay, sure. But then you want me to transit from nothing to something? Yeah. So, the thing is, CSS can read your mind. So, but the thing is, they're very nice, and then they don't tell you. So, for example, if you work in JavaScript, right? Like, when you write something wrong, and then they don't understand you, most of them, they will scold you. So, either they will scold you if you have a linter, or if you don't have a linter, they will scold you inside the console log. But then CSS is very nice. They will never scold you. Something aggressive, aggressive. Ah. Yeah. Something they, they put a, like a <laughs> yellow triangle. Ah. <laughs> but that's about it. The yellow triangle ah, is like quite nice. One. <laughs> okay. So tip number two, which is <laughs> you need to look within yourself for assumptions. So sometimes when you write your styling, you make certain assumptions and then you think, ah, yeah, the machine should know what I'm trying to say. But then, no, the machine does not know what you want to say. Be explicit about what you want to do. I just want a transition. You need to say you want to go from zero to 100%. Since the display cannot do it, let's use visibility, zero to 100. The machine says, uh, okay, I totally know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to Stack Overflow question. Next one we have is a CSS selector for no children, but not empty. So, what um, this person is trying to ask is that, let's say if I have uh, a div and then the div got no children, mm. means no button, no key tag, mm. but then it has all tag, it tags by itself. How can I select this? So, I want to select bonkers. <coughs> okay, okay, never mind. So, the important thing right, is that we need to look at this line. I need a pure CSS solution. JS isn't an option and have no control over the source HTML. I thought I knew this stuff, but this is driving me crazy. I just realized what this was a wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this will bring us to the idea of CSS as a programming language. So when you are when you are writing CSS, you are not writing it for fun. Okay, maybe some people write it for fun, but then uh, <laughs> sometimes you just don't write the CSS file only. You actually want to style something. Uh. So, uh, and then what you are styling, sometimes there are buttons, sometimes there are lists, and you realize that you want, you would want to put logic into all these elements because if they have no logic, right, then what's the point? Uh? I mean, just printing out some stuff. And then if you want logic, then that's why we start thinking about programming languages. So, uh, interestingly, CSS class, HTML <laughs> is, com is Turing complete. Uh, I mean, you can check this out. It, it can. Noise. Please scroll. Okay, it's okay. Please look at this yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there are rules that were um, proved to you that a program language is Turing complete and CSS may should pass one of it is rule 110. Cool. So, um, I guess if we are talking about CSS as a program language, then uh, a lot of times we start start to point out like certain properties of it. One of it is whether it's with a program language imperative or declarative. And um, as like web developers, the tools that we have at our disposal, the main two ones, one is JavaScript and one is CSS. Ha, ah, you know what? Guess what? They are, they are completely different. One is, is imperative, one is decorative. So, usually when we write in JavaScript, there's logic and logic is hard. But then, guess what? Decorative logic is even harder. It's like super hard. Okay, never mind. No. So, <laughs> usually, um, what we reach out for 
as web developers is to use JavaScript bailout. So what JavaScript bailout means that when you cannot style something with CSS alone, you just look at JavaScript and say, this help me out. You know, just change this element class equals to selected, please, <laughs> because I cannot change it. You change it for me or, or I'm not clever enough to change it. So I guess to borrow some ideas that we have from functional programming, which is that if you are writing something that's decorative, focus on the result, not the steps. And so a lot of time when we are doing CSS, we get stuck because we are thinking about, oh, okay, step one, because I click, then my children must show. But then but that is very hard to write in CSS. You think about, oh, if this is open, the result is that the children must have underlined. It's going to be a lot easier to think about how you want to write this. So yeah, uh, in summary, three points. First point, dev to sanitation, yes. Second point, look within yourself for assumption. And the last one, which is focus on the results, not steps. And Amazing. <laughs>